pit stops underway. Alex Tagliani pulled the 12 car in. They are going to make a four tire change and fuel. Alex Tagliani started on the front row here today, guys. So 25 laps before he made his second pit stop. You can see the 33 of Scott Speed right behind him there in your screen as they come back out onto the racetrack. So Speed also making his second stop. Guys aren't pushing luck too much here. 20, 20, somewhere 23 to 25 laps. Max are looking at fuel. A lot of different strategies like we talked about earlier going on. How about Robbie Gordon here? A battle for position with the 18 of Michael McDowell. That is for third on the racetrack. Robbie wants it and it looks like, yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he's giving them the peace sign out the driver's side window, and it's basically just a courteous. Look, you, you know, you didn't race me off the exit. Thank you. I'll give it back to you later if you're faster than I am. I'll tell you what, this uh, drop is doing a great job. I mean, he is an incredible road racer, but he's had so much bad luck of late last two or three years. See, Marcus Ambrose coming in, left the screen pit now, but back to Robbie. This is one of the best runs I've seen him have, guys. Yeah, and Michael McDowell. you got to remember that, you know, Michael McDowell dominated Road America and had a uh, self-imposed mistake. Got to come here feeling like he's got to get one back for the team. Ambrose last pitted on lap five. Here he is in lap number 29, and he's not happy with the car, Shannon. That's right. We, we told you earlier how the first laps in this car were when he jumped in and took the green flag. They have been working on the handling pretty much since the start of the race. They made a track bar adjustment on their first pit stop. They're going to continue to work that track bar here on this pit stop as well. It is a scheduled four-tire stop. It may take a little bit longer than normal, guys, because, of course, they will be waiting for fuel. This is one of the Roush Fenway cars that's fielded out of Richard Petty's shop. They put a lot of focus on this car for this particular event because they know how good it is. Jim. All right, Steve Wallace and Justin Allgaier have both hit pit road. There you see Steve Wallace on the left having a little hard time on the left-hand turns. Car's a little loose. They'll take four tires, chassis adjustment, air pressure adjustment, and Steve Wallace is away. 35 miles an hour pit road speed. Right side of your screen. We continue on that battle for second between Robbie Gordon and Michael McDowell. They're chasing that man on the left side of your screen. Jacques Villeneuve, he leads by uh, that margin. Marty, I talked with Jacques Villeneuve earlier. I said, you know, I raced against your uncle, and I've never seen anybody drive deeper in the corner. Well, nobody other than you. <laughs> this guy is unbelievable in the braking zones, and he's running laps right now still over a second faster than the second, third, and fourth place cars. He's just, he won't back off. You see him hit the curbs there. He is so aggressive. And, and that's what I want to ask you guys. Is he using this car up too much? He's got the best car out there right now. Does he need to hammer it that hard? Well, in my opinion, I think he is overdriving just a little bit much, but you're not going to slow this guy down in front of this Canadian crowd. Like I said, this is his Daytona 500. He's going for it. This guy is going to get it on. And he's, pro he's probably caught up in, the, in that hometown feel, isn't he, Rusty? I, th I think he is. He's caught up. It, it's like me when I go to Bristol, where I've won a lot at. I mean, I feel so jazzed up when I get there. Jim. Guys, Michael McDowell is going to come down, and he has been very, very conservative thus far. He told me Friday, I want to save this car for the last five laps of the race. He has done that. It's going to be a four-tire stop, and they will fill it full of Sonoma Racing Fuel. But Michael McDowell and Jason Ratcliffe got together and said, we are not going to push this until about 10 to 15 laps to go. We want to be the best in the last five. And bad news for the 66. Stephen Wallace too fast exiting. He'll have to do the pass through as Jacques Villeneuve continues to motor around this 2.7 mile layout. He won the Atlantic race here back in 1993. That got him his ride into uh, Champ Car, back then known as Cart. He was Rookie of the Year in 94. Of course, won the Indianapolis 500 in the championship in 95, and then moved on to a 10-year career in Formula One, and it, w and it was there that he had his last pole position. I mean, it's been 10 years since he had a pole until today. He's had a great career. You know, it, uh, I grew up not far from here as a fan of his dad, Jill Villeneuve. Fact of the matter is, you know, I'm a fan of anybody that races snowmobiles. <laughs> well, Jill, and he's coming in now. So Jacques, who made his first stop on lap number seven, is now coming in here on lap number 31. Strategies all across the board. You know, there's very few similarities. You know, it's almost like everybody's got a little different theme to this as we watch Robbie Gordon now, the new leader. He will become our fourth different leader with four lead changes. Let's check in with Sanders. 
Well, as Jock makes his way down pit road, they're telling him, wait on fuel. We will give you the cue to go. You guys mentioned how hard he is on equipment. Todd Gordon told me his number one goal as a crew chief today was to try to keep his driver calm inside that race car. It's going to be four tires. The car is very good. They're very happy. No changes for the 22. This car last year with Brad Keselowski at the wheel finished fourth in this race. And of course, last week, Kurt Busch took it to victory at Watkins Glen. You know, we talked about braking and being concerned about can the brake survive on the 22 car. Trust me, Todd Gordon's got the same concern. And uh, they've done some great things to prepare this car. But whatever you're taking now, you got to worry about it catching up with you toward the, the end, Rusty, the last 10, 15 laps. Hey, one thing they need to worry about, they got to get those pit stops a little bit better. 19.2 seconds. That was pretty slow for those Penske guys. Those guys are generally rocket fast. He, he was leading by seven seconds. So yeah, he's, so, right. he, he's so fast right now. He can afford to mess up a little bit, can he? <laughs> Alex Kennedy trying to do all he can to stay on the lead lap right now. Kennedy is 34th. The last car, as we mentioned, has uh, only two cars out of the race. Morgan Shepard, Jeff Green, and uh, Andrew Ranger is off and for all intents and purposes out uh, so his car's still in that runoff area well out of harm's way looks like robbie's going to get around the 23 safely here as they head into turns 13 and 14. yeah i just can't get over how much these these cars get in the air and they slam back down and we know that they sit they coil behind these front springs we know they have a splitter that's a little bit delicate uh gosh there it is really abusive this track is as hard on the car as any that we go to Robbie Gordon's best road course finish in the nationwide series has been second twice. He's not yet won. A five car, Ron Fellows, a former winner here, is in, Jim. That's right, Ron Fellows decided to come down. They have been pretty happy with the race car. He's not complained much about this. Ron Fellows is going to take four tires and pull the goals. It's no go racing fuel. This will get them where they want to be. This was the first big stop of this race in terms of their fuel mileage strategy. As you see, the second can of racing fuel is going in, and Ron Fellows should be good to go still on schedule. Yeah, he pitted on lap 13, and now again here on lap number 32. There is your race leader, Robbie Gordon. Behind is Jason Leffler by nine seconds, however, with J.R. Fitzpatrick enlisted in third here at Montreal. ESPN's coverage of the NFL preseason continues Monday night. Jake Cutler and the Bears take on Eli Manning and the Giants. It's Monday Night Football preseason action on ESPN. Monday at 8 Eastern, and the coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. Back here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, race leader Robbie Gordon has 11 second margin over Jason Leffler. Now, gotta remember, everybody's on different pit strategies, but Gordon and Leffler both pitted on lap number 12, and uh, Gordon's opened up a 11 second lead. In fact, let's uh, go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance and pick it up with second place. And how about it, Jim? Jason Leffler has been running pretty good. In fact, he really needs a good run, Marty, because he is trying to get back on track of only one top 10 in four starts here. Now, a big issue for Jason Leffler was taking care of his brakes. They talked about it all day Friday that he and crew chief Eddie Pardue, but there's been a problem. Take a listen. My brakes are gone. Step on, take care of them, take care of that seems to be the issue with a lot of these teams here. You can say you're going to take care of your brakes, but taking care of them in the heat of battle is a whole other deal. Shannon? Well, speaking of brakes, Jim, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. since lap 10 has been having an issue with his. You saw him on pit road. They went underneath the car. They made sure everything was tight and there was no leaks. They didn't find anything, but he has been struggling, just trying to stay on the course right now. It's all about the championship, the end of the season, because they came into this race as your points leader and just trying to escape with a good finish here today. Jim? With only two top tens of his last six races, Justin Allgaier really needs a good run. Also, he comes into this race fifth in points, 80 back. Now, he says he's not good at fuel mileage races, but remember, he did win a fuel mileage race, essentially, in Chicago earlier this year. Of course, he did run out of fuel at Road America. Justin Allgaier right now just trying to keep his car underneath him and save fuel. Rick? Dan 
Michael Kilpatrick, it's all about fuel strategy. They knew going in the door that they were going to have to do their best to try to manage the fuel. They pitted, so I think they're in a situation now where they think they may be able to go the rest of the way in one stop. It's all been about coaching so far. They've been talking to her on the radio, making sure that she knows where her lap times are and that her lap times are just fine. So it's all about coaching her through this. Remember, this is her first nationwide race on a road course. Jim? Jason Leffler has come in. We told you about his brake issue. Not a whole lot they can do about that right now, but they will pack that car full of fuel, send him on his way back on pit schedule. Shannon. Robbie Gordon, guys, just over the radio saying that he has out of fuel, but he was able to get it started as you see him on the racetrack right now, just maintaining, coming down pit road for a pit stop. Guys, he's been out there for a while. His last pit stop was right around lap 12. So as you see, Robbie Gordon is going to have to come down for fuel. In fact, Gordon has slowed markedly. In fact, he stayed out one lap too long, guys, as he is shown right now in 12th position. Yeah, I just don't understand that, you know, that uh, you just can't have those types of mistakes, particularly on a road course. So he pitted on lap 12 and is pitted here on lap number 35, but he uh, surrendered quite a bit of track position. And right now it means that Jacques Villeneuve has gone back into the race lead with Marcus Ambrose 8.6 seconds behind. Yeah, and he's so good on, on road courses that when you get to the lead, you can just discipline yourself, remind yourself, don't spin the tires on the exit, don't drag the left front or right front as I'm breaking into the corners. Don't miss a shift. Be smooth on the shifter. It's it's easy to take care of your car here, and Todd Gordon's got to hope that.